Hello, everybody. It's time for your Week 4 Northeast Conference Football Google Hangout. I'm Ralph Ventry in Somerset, New Jersey at NEC headquarters. This week, we're bringing in Kyle Harbridge from the St. Francis Red Flash. Kyle is out in Loretto, Pennsylvania, and he joins us to hang out here in Week 4. Kyle, I want to thank you for your time today, um, but we'll start off with the fact that you're actually here hanging out with us uh, during a game week. And that was something that you didn't have the opportunity to do last year. Um, and, of course, well, we, we just started our Google Hangout sessions this year, but the reason why, of course, you couldn't participate last year was you suffered a, an injury in the preseason and you were lost for the entire 2012 campaign. Um, but now, obviously, you're back. So my first question to you is, how does it feel to be back? How does it feel to be back there, um, back out there on the field uh, with your teammates playing football again? First off, I just want to say thanks for have, having me, Ralph. You know, this is a great opportunity. And you guys are doing a great job over there, you know, keeping everyone updated on Twitter. And it's just stuff like this. It's great for the, great for the conference. Well, thanks and, a lot, Kyle. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, no problem. And, um... <clears throat> As far as my injury, you know, I feel, I feel great right now, and I'm ecstatic to be back. I'm can't I can't wait for you know the season, you know, to keep rolling on. I can't wait to get this this win this weekend against Lincoln, and you know I'm healthy. I feel great. Teammates teammates are all up and ready to go. Well, let's talk a little bit about last year uh, before we we move more into this year. Um, obviously, being on the sideline. It couldn't have been easy for you. Um, from the little that I know you, you seem like a competitor. And uh, to not be able to get out there every day in practice and then every Saturday on game day, um, it must have been tough, no? Absolutely. It's the most frustrating thing when you know, you're just you're taking a back, back seat to everybody. I like to you know, be out there competing. Like you said, I, I am a competitor, a competitive guy in everything, I, everything that I do. And uh, you know, just to, to be out all year, not being able to practice, to play, it's extremely frustrating. But, you know, it, injuries happen as part of the game, and you got to uh, just, fight, just fight back even harder. Now, while you were watching last year, uh, you had to take some enjoyment in the fact that the run game really didn't struggle uh, in, despite your absence. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, they had a great season. They led the conference in rushing. Um, why do you think that was? Uh, why did the run game have its best year, even without its number one back uh, in the backfield? Well, that's just a testament to our recruiting and our and our depth here at St. Francis. Um, when I when I first started out here, we didn't have much depth. Our recruiting wasn't that great, but now you know, as I'm a fifth year senior and you know, last year, it's really starting to pick up now, and it's a testament to our our offensive line they really they play their hearts out every single game and you know like I said before our depth and we have a lot of great talent at running back now you mentioned St. Francis has more depth than they did when you first started and um, not only has the run game improved and and went to being the top rushing attack in the NEC last year um, but the team's results has improved uh, uh, have improved as well as you've noticed um, five wins last year, and uh, basically you were one or two plays away from, from having the program's first winning record in, uh, in, in a couple of decades. Um, so can you just talk about the, the team's improvement since you've been at St. Francis and also um, what Chris Valerio, your head coach, has had to do with that success? Yeah, uh, you said it right there. Coach Coach V, he's, he's the – He's the cornerstone of this team. He's he's the one that made this all happen. You know, he's he's the reason for this turnaround and why this program is is heading nowhere but up right now. And uh, he brought on two two great coordinators. You know, defensive coordinator coach Benzel and our offensive coordinator coach Long, who have done a tremendous job so far and you know putting a great schemes together for us and getting us ready for for Saturday. So, you know, he's done a great job bringing on some some great people that that know football um what's it like to play for uh, a coach like Chris Valerio um I assume he's a pretty fiery guy but uh also for those 
are pro who don't know, and for those who are also aware, he uh, spent 11 years as an offensive lineman in the National Football League. Uh, he played a number of years for the Bears and then was uh, a big free agent signing for my Buffalo Bills. Uh, and he played uh, with the Bills from 04 to 06. Obviously, he's a central Pennsylvania native. Um, after he retired, he came back home, and he kind of found his niche here at St. Francis. Um, but what does playing for someone like Coach V, um, not only his personality, but someone with his experience and someone who has been at the top level before, uh, how is playing for someone uh, of that stature? It's, it's awesome. I mean, you can't ask for anything more. It, I mean, he's he's been in our shoes before. So, as players, we respect him. We we you know we I think we all have a great relationship with him because, like I said, he's been in our shoes before. He's experienced the same things that we've experienced. So, I mean, you have that that great deal of respect for a coach that's you know been in your shoes before. Um, and I mean, it's it's great for us. And you mentioned the offensive line earlier, and. Uh, how their play was a big reason why St. Francis was number one in rushing in 2012 and uh, is off to a good start again this year. Of course, you had back-to-back 100-yard -back games to start the season. Not a bad way to start at all. Um, but just talk about that offensive line uh, in particular. Are there any guys that you want to shout out? And uh, how is your relationship with the big fellows up front? I'm gonna shout. I'm gonna shout all five of them out here. The big, the big hogs up front. We got left, left tackle. You know, we got Thurston, um, left guard. Um, drawing a blank here. <laughs> left guard. We have uh, Brandon Bunting. Center. We have our freshman Michael Boyd. Right guard. Big cat. Can't can't forget him. Can't miss him. Lloyd Hill. Right. The big cat. Yes, sir. Lloyd Hill. And um, right tackle Con Godola. All five are you know tremendous part of our offense. They they keep us going and they're they're the uh, fuel to our fire. So um, everything everything we do is it's based off what they do up front. Now they're like I said, they're the fuel to our fire. It's offense. I'm um, I'm guessing that uh, it's not a coincidence that one of the strengths of the Red Flash is the offensive line when uh, when Big Coach V is at the helm. So, um, but. Uh, Moving on, um, just talk a little bit more about your expectations for this season, uh, personally and then, of course, team-oriented as well. Uh, you knew that you were coming back for your fifth year. Um, what did you want to accomplish? And obviously, uh, how do you think the Red Flash can, can do it? Well, personally... Um just to be better than what I was my, my junior year before. I mean, after, you know, when I got, when I got hurt, obviously missed last year, but my junior year, I just want to be better, be a better player, be a better teammate, and um, just be a better leader overall. I think if, I, you know, if I'm able to do that, it's, it's good progress for me, and I'm just trying to get better and try to be the best person I can be. Um, speaking team-wise, we want to win the conference championship, and we're – we're not settling for anything anything less. I mean, we work entirely too hard year in and year out to to be content with five and six, you know, seven seven and five, whatever it may be. We're not content with that. We want to win a conference championship because that's what we work for. <clears throat> Obviously, big expectations uh, in Loretto. How does the team go about accomplishing that? Um, what do you have to do? Uh, as a unit on offense and also as a team to, to deliver that first ever NEC football title to St. Francis? Well, as a team, I think we just got to be more consistent. We have, to, we have to play together. You know, a lot of times, you know, defense will have a great game. A prime example, like last week at JMU, defense played an outstanding game. In offense, we didn't play so hot. We made a lot of immense mistakes, and against a team like JMU, we can't afford to do that. So, We've got to play together as as a, as an, as a whole, and um, I think you know great things will come out of that. Offensively speaking, we've got to um, just also be, you know be more consistent and and um, 
be more balanced in our attack, meaning that you know we you know we're pretty we're pretty damn good at running the ball, and we got to be just as good at passing the ball as well. So if we're able to be more you know, more balanced in what we do, I think we'll we'll see some some pretty good successes here. You mentioned passing the football. Obviously, uh, you have a number of first-year quarterbacks uh, under center. Uh, Coach V has used the rotation of sorts over the first two weeks. Um, but a couple of guys have stepped in and made big plays. Can you just talk about uh, the quarterback play you've received already from your rookies? Um, and obviously, uh, in the first two weeks, I, I need to point out that you played on the road those first two weeks in pretty hostile atmospheres, uh, big stadiums down in Statesboro uh, at Georgia Southern, and then of course in Harrisonburg, Virginia at James Madison. Uh, both teams actually former FCS national champions, so uh, not easy environments to go into, but uh, you had these rookie quarterbacks, you're rotating them, but uh, you still got production for uh, from them uh, in these games. Talk a little bit about about these signal callers, yeah, Mac, Max Ward and uh, Capri Thompson, they've done a they've done a great job. You know, like you said, they're they're freshmen, they're young, they're very inexperienced, and to to you know lead us in two very hostile environments to start off the season is not an easy task. So, um, and I think they've they've handled handled themselves pretty well. Um, I mean, they're they're both very very good athletes, very competitive in everything that they do. And I mean, they're still they're still both pushing each other, and it's it's a great competition because it brings out the best of both of them. And obviously, you mentioned that uh, the offense had somewhat of a, an average game um, down at JMU, but even with that, you guys were right there with a chance to win the ball game uh, with a minute to go on JMU's 36-yard line. Granted, you came up short, and um, it doesn't seem like you're one to uh, take solace in moral victories, but the fact that you guys did have a chance to win the game and were there step for step with a nationally ranked team on their home field, a team that's won the national championship before, that had to feel good, though. No, that had to... Had to uh, Give you guys some confidence of just how far you could go this season. Go this season. It definitely gave us some confidence, but um, you know the reason why we were in that game is because our defense played outstanding the entire you know the entire game. Offensively, like I said, we didn't we didn't play well. I think we um, we actually took a step back from the first week, and you know we always say that our biggest improvement should be from week one to week two, and offensively, I don't think we did that. So you know. We've got to continue to be better. I mean, if we if we played better, we, we should have won that game, and we should have won it big. And uh, I take that. I put that that loss on my back uh, offensively because I'm the offensive leader. I'm the leader of this team. But, um, you know, it's my job to make sure everyone's ready to go and make sure everyone knows their assignment. And uh, we can't be making those mental mistakes. The teams do not make those mistakes. But they, they push through and they, they execute and get the job done. So uh, sounds like no such thing as a moral victory in, in your book, Kyle. Um, yes, sir. Before, before we let you go, i got to ask you, um, you mentioned how you want to improve individually, uh, personally, upon your junior year. Um, you had a, a nice year, over 1,000 yards, of course. Um, you also had a 346-yard rushing day in a win over Moorhead State. Um, so what are you thinking? You're going to have a 350-yard day, maybe a 400-yard day this year, or what? And, and when can we look for that? Maybe maybe against my alma mater, the Fordham Rams? <laughs> well, hey, they say records are, are set to be broken, right? So, you know, you never never know. Maybe <laughs> maybe this week, maybe against the Fordham Rams. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but you know, it's de definitely possible. I trust everybody on our offense, especially our offensive line. So um, I don't know when it'll happen, but it might just happen, you know, this year. Well, that would be something. Uh, I'll definitely, uh, definitely be something to look forward to. So, and of course, back then in 2011, uh, in the win over Moorhead State, you also had four touchdowns 
and you were a national performer of the week in FCS. So, um, of course, that would be awesome if you could uh, if you could do it again. But um, I assume right now your focus is just on beating Lincoln in in week four, and then uh, moving on to conference play. Absolutely, just right, just focusing on Lincoln right now and getting our first win, and let's keep rolling from there. Just keep you know pumping them out. All right, well, Kyle. It was great hanging out with you today. I want to thank you for your time. Uh, again, Kyle Harbridge, he and the Red Flash are playing at home, their home opener at Lincoln this week, or excuse me, their home opener at the Gold Field against Lincoln this week. You can watch the action live on Front Row. So you can see Mr. Harbridge, number 22, the pride of Eastern Pennsylvania, uh, in action this weekend on NEC Front Row. And actually here, if you're going to the game, um, I don't know if you saw this, Kyle. Uh, we got this nice little piece. It's our, our NEC football game day guide. Uh, we're going to be handing these out to the fans in attendance at the home opener this weekend in Loretto. And uh, look, you got your little your, your photo on there. Kyle nice. Harbridge, 22. So uh, <laughs> pick up a copy, hang it on the wall, and uh, – Root uh, Kyle Harbors and the Red Flash onto what we hope is a Week 4 victory. So thanks again, Kyle. All the best to you and St. Francis this year. Thanks a lot, Ralph. Thanks for having me. All right. Anytime. Go, go Red Flash. Sounds good. Hashtag Flash Fever, right? Flash yes, Fever. Yes, sir. Flash Fever. All right. Catch it. All right. This was your Week 4 Google Hangout. For Kyle Harbridge, I'm Ralph Fentry. Thanks for joining us, folks.